Oftentimes, people might think the apex predator of the Upper Jurassic was the Allosaurus. However, both in North America and Europe, he was dwarfed by another large theropod. He may not have been the biggest, but certainly the most abundant predator of the late Jurassic, making him one of the most successful carnivores of all time. The Allosaurus lived in the Cimmerigian to Typhonian stages of the late Jurassic. Fossils of this dinosaur were found in North America, Portugal and possibly even Tanzania. Allosaurus fragilis had an average length of 8.5 meters or 28 feet and a mass of 1.7 metric tons. The higher estimates of the largest definitive Allosaurus specimen are a length of 9.7 meters or 32 feet and a weight ranging between 2.3 and 2.7 metric tons. Allosaurus is also popular for making appearances in paleomedia, TV shows and films like Walking with Dinosaurs, The Ballad of Big L, Jurassic Fight Club, Dinosaur Revolution, Planet Dinosaur, The Jurassic World Franchise, Dinosaur King and most recently Life on Our Planet. One of the most distinctive features of Allosaurus was its skull. It was large and massive, with a short snout and a deep brain case. Its teeth were sharp and serrated, designed for tearing through flesh. Allosaurus' teeth were replaced regularly, which helped to keep them sharp and effective. It also had a short muscular neck that supported its large head. Its tail was long and slender, helping the dinosaur balance while running and turning. Allosaurus' hind legs were long and powerful, much larger than its front legs. Its feet were long and slender, with three clawed toes on each foot. Allosaurus' claws were sharp and curved, helping it to grip prey and defend itself. And now let's switch over to Daniel, who's at the Carnegie Quarry in Utah. This skull is one of the best preserved skulls ever discovered. As you can see here, we got the eyes of the Allosaurus. And in the front there's the nose. Well, thanks Daniel for this great insight. But I have to tell you honestly, he's quite annoying today, isn't he? Wait, hang on a second. Now he wants to show you his Allosaurus claw he bought in Utah. Oh, come on. Well, hello there. And as you heard from Daniel, I'm here to show you the claw of the mighty Allosaurus. I've actually got um, two Allosaurus uh, toy models here. I hope you can see that. And I've got a claw I bought in Utah back when I was in America this August. And this thing is huge. You, you see basically the serration, it's, it's razor sharp on the end. And it's, it's, really, it's really big. So this is the reconstruction of a big Allosaurus claw. You can kind of guess what an Allosaurus can do with this thing, right? He can basically slash grip onto prey and inflict wounds on his prey. And with that input, let's get back to the video. The first Allosaurus fossil was discovered in 1869 by Ferdinand Wendover Hayden in Colorado. However, it was not until 1877 that Othniel Charles Marsh, famous paleontologist, named the dinosaur Allosaurus. Marsh was one of the leading paleontologists of his time and he was involved in a fierce rivalry with another paleontologist named Edward Drinker Cope. This rivalry, known as the Bone Wars, led to the discovery and naming of many new dinosaur species, including Allosaurus. Since Marsh's discovery of Allosaurus, many more fossils of this dinosaur have been found. In fact, Allosaurus is one of the best known and most studied dinosaurs in the world. The Morrison Formation in North America is home to a wealth of dinosaur fossils. This formation also includes some of the largest dinosaurs of the late Jurassic. In general, plant-eating dinosaurs of this region include sauropods like Apatosaurus, Barosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Camarasaurus, Diplodocus and Supersaurus. Phyreophorans like Hesperosaurus and Stegosaurus, Donificians like Camptosaurus, Nanosaurus and Dryosaurus also call this place their home. And now let's switch over to Daniel, who is once again in Utah and wants to show you one of the most famous plant-eating dinosaurs of the Morrison Formation. 
the most common dinosaur in the Carnegie Quarry and in the Morrison Formation is the Camarasaurus. The Camarasaurus is a sauropod who reached lengths of up to 18 meters. It's the most commonly found dinosaur here in the quarry. As you can see here, we have a juvenile Camarasaurus, about five meters long or so. It's not often that we find baby dinosaurs, or let's say young dinosaurs, but here is the reconstruction of a young Stegosaurus. It's about a meter long, I guess, and here you see the bones that we found of it. The Morrison Formation was also home to the Allosaurus. The flora of this formation was dominated by ferns, cycads and conifers. The climate was warm and humid with seasonal monsoons. The Morrison Formation would have looked like a lush, subtropical floodplain with meandering rivers. The species of Allosaurus in the Morrison Formation include Allosaurus fragilis, Allosaurus lucasi and Allosaurus gemazzini, with Allosaurus fragilis being the type species. And now let's switch over to Daniel once again, who wants to show you the most abundant predator of Utah's part of the Morrison Formation. The most common predator in these lands was Allosaurus. Specifically, the species Allosaurus gemetzini. Like Daniel just showed you, Allosaurus was abundant and thriving in North America and the late Jurassic. So much so that he made up most of the Morrison Formation's fauna. In fact, two thirds of the theropod fauna is Allosaurus. However, that's not the whole story. Despite Allosaurus being a large theropod of the Morrison Formation, the presence of several large and medium-sized theropods created a highly competitive ecosystem. In this environment, Allosaurus competed with many other theropods, including Ornitholestes, Ceratosaurus, Marshosaurus, Torvosaurus and Sorophaganex. Here, Allosaurus could have ambushed on officiants like Camptosaurus, Dryosaurus and Nanosaurus and potentially even the mighty Stegosaurus. He could also have hunted theropods such as Ornitholestes, Marshosaurus and even Ceratosaurus. However, predators like these all occupy different niches which indicates that they would rather get out of each other's sight. There is only a slight indicator that Allosaurus would have hunted sauropods such as Apatosaurus, Camarasaurus and Diplodocus. Some suggest Allosaurus pack hunting behavior from the findings of over 40 individuals in a bone bed. This is not certain evidence for Allosaurus hunting in packs. It's much more likely that Allosaurus would feed itself on dead sauropods or attack juveniles. Since flesh grazing has also been suggested for later descendants of Allosaurus like the Mapiosaurus, it would have been also possible for the Allosaurus. Flesh grazing is a strategy of active feeding without actually having to kill the animal itself. The European counterpart Allosaurus europius on the other hand inhabited the Lourinho Formation of Portugal. The Lourinho Formation was a coastal floodplain environment during the late Jurassic period. The climate was warm and humid and the landscape was dominated by forests of ferns, cycads and conifers. There were also beaches and lagoons along the coast. Dinosaurs of this region include Phyreophorans like Miragaya and Dracopelta, sauropods like Lusotitan and Denirosaurus, and an officiant like Draconix. The more coastal sites of this formation could have consisted of sharks, crocodilomorphs and turtles. In the Lorinia formation, Allosaurus europius also had to compete with theropods. These include Ceratosaurus, Lorinianosaurus, Avia Tyrannis and the massive Torvosaurus gurnei. Here Allosaurus could have hunted on officiants like Draconix, Phyreophorans like Miragaya and Dracopelta, as well as sauropods like Lusotitan and Dinhyrosaurus. Once again for the sauropods, it's likely that he hunted youngsters, fed on carcasses or just flesh grazed them. Theropods he could have hunted would be Lorinianosaurus and Ceratosaurus. However, as mentioned earlier, hunters normally don't start useless fights risking their life for nothing. 
In conclusion, the Allosaurus was super abundant, including four different species in his genus, occupying different niches, and living in two continents as one of the apex predators of the late Jurassic. Thanks for watching. I hope you could learn something new or interesting. Subscribe to Mega Raptor and click the bell to stay updated and not miss anything. For more content, you can also check out the playlist. And with that, have a wonderful day or evening. Goodbye. Here you can see Giga Jet Allosaurus.